to day three of our home workout series and the second day of our strength program. Now remember, we are going to do a full body weight workout here by the time we get done with the day, but we are going to focus on our back and our hamstrings today. Now the thing that's a little bit different today is we're actually going to use some equipment. Now, when I programmed this, I wanted it to be practical, I wanted it to make sense, and I didn't want it to be goofy. So I didn't want to just include any possible thing we could. I wanted to include some basic things that didn't get weird, all right? So we should have these things in our house, and most of these things we should be comfortable doing uh, as we go through these movements, okay? So for today's workout, we will need some stuff. First, we need a backpack, because we will be using it as part of our kettlebell swings and some of our rowing motions. We will need a broomstick, or a mop handle, whatever you have. You possibly may need a bed sheet, which we're gonna get creative with. And then we will need a bath or beach towel, okay? So we're gonna go through how we're gonna use each of these. Now with that said, let's get into what we're gonna be doing for part A, because we are gonna do a part A, B, C, and D, just like we did on Monday. Now, for part A, it's going to be three sets, so same format, but we're gonna be doing 20 Bulgarian split squats, 10 table supine rows, don't worry, I'll explain it, 20 one-legged RDLs, or Romanian deadlifts, and 10 backpack rows. All right, so we will get into each of these, and Janet is going to demonstrate all of the movements. Let's get into it. Here Janet is demonstrating the Bulgarian split squat. What you'll notice this key is that she's just dropping straight down. She's set up in a way where her foot here is, the shin is vertical, so her weight is dropping into her heel, and she's just driving her torso straight up. So we're not trying to shift forward and back. So we really want to protect the knee by dropping straight down, a pretty vertical shin, and driving straight up here. With this movement, we'll be doing 10 on each leg. Right here, Janet is setting up for the table supine row. Now, we have an island here, so it's definitely a strong table to pull off of. But she's going to grip it up and just do 10 reps here, pulling the bottom of our chest, or based on whatever angle you were on, to the bottom of the table. All right. Now, obviously, if you want to make it harder, you would put your feet up, or you can slide back a little bit. To scale it. So if you don't have a sturdy table or you are uncomfortable with that movement, you don't trust your table, well then we do have another alternative for you. This also may be more scary, so make sure you put it in a strong door, but you tie a knot in a bed sheet, put it into a strong door, here close it up, and then we can do our supine row from a standing position where you pull the slack out of the sheet, really make sure it's just the knot in there, and then you hang from the position, you get into a vertical position, and then you do your supine row. So now, obviously, this is a little more of a scaled version. But if you wanted to make it a little harder, you would walk your feet in more and pull. And then, obviously, if you needed to make it easier, you'd walk further out or grab higher up on the sheet. So now we're doing the one-leg RDLs. And if you remember from when we did these last week, a key point is that she is keeping her hips pretty forward. So that is why... We're gonna hold something. So we grab the most scaled version down of anything you grab, a book, just so you have something to touch with and just so you have a little something to focus on counterbalancing your weight so you can keep your hips straight. She's demonstrating the movement from the side. So we do keep that leg pretty straight, but we do not wanna be locked out or disengaged. Just a slight knee bend. And we're doing 10 on each leg here. Once again, the hand that's touching down is the opposite of the leg that's staying down on the floor. So here Janet is doing our backpack rows. We'll be doing 10 on each side. Now she did have to get elevated because of the length of the backpack, but obviously if you have equipment, just pull from a bench or use any weights that you actually have. But when we focus here, you wanna bend over with a straight back and pull with that mid back, tucking that elbow back so we really get that good scap work. If you do have a pull-up bar, I would prefer you to do just 10 pull-ups rather than the 20 backpack rows with the 10 on each side. This way we're getting work in different planes. So we're pulling straight up rather than constantly doing that row movement. But this is only if you have a chin-up bar. Okay, so now we're gonna get into part B, which is also going to be three sets. Now remember with all of our strength movements, specifically the part A and the part B of all of these things, we're moving at our own pace. We do wanna be a little tempo, we wanna be getting a sweat, but we want it to meet us where we are. So if you find it easier here in week one, then keep a real upbeat tempo so we're kind of burning out. If you find it harder, do a full set straight through and then take a little bit of rest before getting back into it. Now for part B, we're going to be doing the three sets here of 10 pistols, 10 leg curls, 20 broomstick curls, and 10 elevated hip thrusters. 
So we're going to go through each of those. We're going to demo all of them, specifically the pistols, because we want to give you different ways to scale this, but it is a skill that I think we can develop over time here if we do it right. Let's get into it. Here is the RX version of what we're going to be doing, a pistol. So Janet is demonstrating we're going to be doing five on each leg. Now you've got to keep that weight back in our heel so we don't totally destroy the knee and just try and bring some stability to the movement so we're safe. Here Janet is doing a scaled version of this, a partial pistol or kind of like a one-legged squat here. But with the pistol, a lot of ankle mobility is key, even mobility in our hamstrings and our low back. So if you lack some of that skill set, you can get on top of a bench like this. It could be a staircase if needed and just go as low as you can where you're still squatting with that one leg and all the same principles where we're trying to drop that weight into our heel and just doing the best range of motion we can. We would do five on each you're not side. not comfortable in that other scared, scaled variation, then you can do just where you sit down to a chair and you bring it back up just to get a feel for this movement. Once again, same thing, dropping our weight through our heels, sitting back in the movement to protect the knee. But this is a good way to scale the movement and get you comfortable with it if it's the first time you're doing it. And once again, five on each side. Here we're doing the leg curls. And this is really gonna be up to you on how you scale this. So you're gonna lower yourself down, hooking your feet under the couch. And you kind of catch yourself and then throw yourself back up. And the amount that you throw yourself up is really based on how much assistance you need. All right, this is a very hard movement. Your hammies are going to be on fire. And if needed, like you see here, Janet has a little bit of a mat under her knees just to kind of soften it so it doesn't hurt too much. Ten reps of these. And like I said, use the push to help you out as much as needed. So now we're going to do something a little fun here with the 20 broomstick backpack curls. So she slides the broomstick in between. Obviously, make sure it's strong enough. She's gonna set up here with the backpack, load it up as much as you want. Now you're gonna do these curls here, but you're gonna do them slow. So you're gonna get a lot of time under tension. It's gonna take a little time. Uh, when doing these, the bag kind of flops on you a little bit as you come to the top, unless you control the speed. So if you control the speed, it's a really good movement. It really works. If you go too fast, it kind of starts slanging around a little bit. But if you do keep the time under tension, you keep a good pace to it, you're definitely gonna get a good burn in your arms. All right, now Janet is doing the 10 reps of elevated feet hip thrusters. So she's really kind of just putting her feet up on the bench or up on anything you got. And you're gonna drive through your hips and kind of squeeze at the top. Now this is to emphasize and focus on the hamstrings. You'll see in part C, we're gonna do something that focuses on the glutes. So the elevated feet, drive through the hips, squeeze at the top, 10 reps total. All right guys, now we're to part C. So now we're, like I said, on part C, I always want to be a little more muscle stamina, give us a pump kind of give us that wad feel. So what we're gonna do with this one is we're gonna do one minute at each station and you're going to do max reps. Now I still want you to focus on quality, but we're gonna demonstrate each of these movements, but you're gonna try and max it out and really get a burn. It's gonna be real light, but you're gonna do as many reps as possible. So with the first movement, it's going to be towel rows. The next movement is going to be broomstick overhead squats. Third, it's going to be reverse snow angels. And fourth, we're going to do a shoulder elevated hip thrusters and that's so we can work the glutes. I know we're getting some real prison shit now. So we're gonna get into it and demonstrate all of these movements. Here, these are our towel rows. So you will roll up a towel, kind of get it tight, and you will use your hands to pull against each other to keep tension. And you're just gonna row down to your chest. Now you're gonna set your clock to four minutes and your first minute is gonna be this station where you just burn out. The first 10 reps or so won't be that hard, but as you're starting to get into the teens and the 20s, you'll start to feel a good pump and I'll start to get pretty lactic in the lats and the upper back. So as we finish the towel rows, we would get right into our overhead squat. So grab that broomstick, drive that bar over top of our shoulders, and we want to be active in all of our tissue. So our upper back, our shoulders, our arms are locked out, driving that bar up. Even though it is a broomstick, do not get lazy and settle. Now as Janet turns to the side here, you're going to see that she's trying to keep that bar over top of the shoulders. She's not putting the bar way far back. She doesn't have the bar forward in her head. And if she couldn't do this full range of motion, Janet would just go partially down to keep the arms locked out and to stabilize the shoulders. Only support what you can do. The thing I'm excited about doing these here at home is that we can only use a broomstick. So I actually think we could focus on our form and our quality rather than just putting on as much weight as we can and destroying our shoulders. So try and focus on that and get better at this movement and get better at your range of motion. As soon as you're done your overhead squats, that minute is up, you jump right into our reverse snow angels. Now we don't need to keep our feet up or tense. So we'll put this towel under our head, the one we used earlier. We're just driving those hands all the way up and then kind of like swishing them down alongside our body. Keep everything tight, fingers pointed, bring it all the way down. Try and do a nice controlled movement, 
But at the same time, just keep going until you get that burn in the upper shoulders and upper back. Now Janet is going right from the reverse snow angels into the shoulder elevated hip thruster. So this is the opposite of what we did earlier where now our shoulders are high and we're driving our hips up. Same thing, squeeze at the top. Now this is supposed to focus a little more on the glutes as opposed to the hamstrings. So we're trying to balance out our training. If you're uncomfortable with the bench, just maybe lean on a couch. Something just gives you a little bit of stability and drive those hips up, squeeze your butt. All right guys, now we're gonna get into the wad. So finally we get a little fun. We're out of our strength portion and we're gonna do a typical CrossFit wad here. So with that, we're gonna be using our backpack a lot for this workout. So we're gonna be doing 35 kettlebell swings and we're just gonna be doing a Russian style swing. So we're only gonna be coming up to about shoulder height. Do not worry about going higher than that. We're just gonna be hinging at the hip, really get a good pop out of our hip and that's it. That's all we're going for. So 35 reps there, make the bag as heavy as you want. Then we're going to go to 25 thrusters. Probably just hold the bottom of the bag. We'll give you the biggest stability. And you're just going to drive it all the way up. Don't, don't make it awkward. Don't overdo it. Just drive it all the way up. Maybe go outside if you need the room or if you're ceiling as well. And then finally, we're doing 15 V-ups. We're very familiar with this. We did this during our prime home games. But if you can do full range of motion and touch your feet, then go for it. And if you need to scale it and just maybe bring it together here in that V motion and touch just above your knees, then do that as well. Make it work for you wherever you are. So we're gonna be doing that workout for three rounds. 35, 25, 15, three rounds for time, load those scores in, and then you've deserved a salad because you just did a lot of work. I'll see you guys tomorrow.